Hi, everyone. Today, I want to spend some time uh, talking about a few of the ideas that we would have covered in class on Wednesday. Uh, I pushed out the, um, the breakdown sheet. Uh, I um, want to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, that today. We're going to continue to work on it in class on Monday. Um, I have it set right now for Sunday, uh, but I'll explain what I would like you to at least start thinking about um, until uh, and do with that until we get back into class on Monday. So um, I just want to cover right now a couple of the things that I um, didn't get a chance to talk about in class on Monday. Um, after, you know, with our with our lecture time, uh, I missed you on Wednesday, so we're uh, a little bit behind, but we'll get caught up. Uh, so. We are at a point where we're uh, starting to um, sort of talk about how the visuals work, what a comic book page looks like. That's really the next step that I want to um, address. You've been reading um, a lot of the pieces out of the uh, Best American Comics. Um, and as I mentioned in class on Monday, those are creator drawn. Uh, so uh, there really there are no scripts to go along with that. Um, on Monday, I'm going to share with you some examples of um, actual graphic narrative scripts and how those look on the page. Uh, we're not at the point yet where you're starting to sort of write that. Um, the breakdown sheet is the next step in the process of um, getting to the place where we're going to uh, create those. Um, actual uh, script pages. And I also want to take a look at some uh, samples of how that's drawn out. Um, so we'll have, we'll juxtapose the, um, the script uh, and the descriptions, dialogue, etc. Uh, on uh, the page and what that looks like as it's translated by the artist onto uh, the actual comic book page. Uh, so a couple ideas that I want to um, just address real quick. Uh, this week's reading was out of the uh, second Will Eisner book. This is the graphic storytelling and visual narrative. Um, Will Eisner was uh, a huge name in um, underground comics, uh, particularly during the 50s when... Um, McCarthyism was really kind of in full swing, and uh, comic books really became uh, the target of, um, of social uprising, kind of the ways in which Dungeons and Dragons and role playing in the 80s and video games in the 90s and 2000s uh, sort of were the, uh, the sort of the social victims of. Um, of uh, how juvenile delinquency was sort of, the, the ways in which juvenile delinquency was blamed. Comic books really took the brunt of that, um, of that uh, blame in the 50s. Uh, Will, Will Eisner's, um, a lot of Will Eisner's work comes out of that time period. Uh, there were dozens and dozens of uh, very famous artists, uh, comic book artists and writers in the 50s. Um, that grew out of that sort of underground movement. And uh, with that, Will Eisner and also Scott McCloud, who we read and watched that video on Monday, um, they're the two who, really the most famous, who have taken their own work to another level of kind of explaining how comics work. So these... Uh, these two books and, and the chapter in Understanding Comics um, really are the, the texts that help us and will help us talk about and better understand not just what comics look like on the page, but kind of how they work. Um, so a few ideas that I want to talk about um, in this, particularly the kind of story that, that, um, that I'm encouraging you to tell here. Um, Eisner breaks down several different types of storytelling, uh, visual storytelling. And the one that I think is most important, this is on page 33, uh, again, in the, um, 
the graphic storytelling and visual narrative book. On 33, uh, he describes telling the, the slice of life story, what he calls the slice of life uh, story. And um, I, think, I think his description there best fits with the ways in which I'm asking you to go about thinking and developing this particular story for your character, because this really is going to be a slice of life. Um, you're in the end, uh, you're creating uh, an eight page comic. And um, in just a little bit, I'm going to go over sort of how the page looks and how we define the page and, and that sort of thing. Um, but we have um, an eight page comic that we're gonna be developing. So there's not a lot of room there to work with in telling this story. And I'm asking you to kind of start with the character sort of in the middle of this conflict, the middle of this problem. So there's not gonna be a lot of ex exposition. There's not a lot of building up to the point where um, the character gets involved in the conflict. This, your character is in it right from the start. Um, so this is really going to be a slice of life um, story. He refers to it as slice, a slice of life story generally extracts an interesting segment from human experience and examines it realistically. The storyteller selects an event of interest which can stand alone, um, counts on the life experience, imagination of the reader to supply the impact of the story. So there's a lot of really great ways and we'll work on those over the next several weeks that you can bring you can bring information about a character's past you can bring certain information into the story to give it to your reader that will help them better um, understand who this character is and the impact that the story has on that this character's life without really needing to get into a lot of exposition uh, the ways in which we can with uh, fiction writing. Um, we have that storytelling tool available to us in fiction that we really don't have in graphic narrative uh, just because we're limited by the space and because first and foremost, this is a visual medium. Um, we, we tell the story through the visual on the page. And uh, if you haven't yet, if you're watching this and you haven't yet, looked at the writer's prompt that I posted that will give you a little bit of a um, an explanation of what I mean by that um, so uh, take a look at take a look at that um, so thinking more about your story I'm jumping ahead here a little bit um, in um, in Eisner's book here but I think an important quote that I want to share with you um, the reader shares the actor's experience and the actor meaning the, the characters in the, in the story. Uh, the operative word is share because the inner feelings of the protagonist are understandable to the reader who would have similar emotions under the same circumstances. This is really no different from everything that we've been talking about in fiction. Um, our goal as writers is to uh, get the reader to uh, feel empathy, to feel a connection to the, uh, particularly the protagonist and uh, the, the emotional journey of that character. Uh, and it's the same in visual storytelling. That is not different. The, the, what's different is the, the ways in which we are, um, ways in which we're telling that story, that we're going to rely more on visuals and less on um, on words in the panel, uh, and we're relying more on the immediacy of the story and not so much on the exposition of uh, the character's life or the background information or um, ideas like that. So uh, where to go from here? I want you to think about how you're going to take your story summary and begin to kind of lay it out in uh, a, a storytelling, um, linear, sort of in a linear way, you know, you're going to have your beginning of your story and your end of the story. 
but what what's going to happen to the character in between those? So work from the first panel of page one to the last panel of page eight in this eight page comic that we're going to draft. Um, and I continue to talk about this and a couple people in class that asked me, look, I'm going to jump off a little bit here to um, just let you all know sort of what we're working on here. Um, we are going to be creating the draft, uh, the, the written draft, the, the script for a comic. We're not doing any drawing. We're not going to be creating comic book pages with panels and all that, all that stuff. The, the script that we're going to create is written out. It's all words. Um, and so that's going to be, that was something that would be used by an artist in order to create the final product. So again, on Monday, I'll have some, um, I'll have some samples and give you a chance to see exactly what it's going to look like. But the next step in the process right now is that breakdown sheet. So I'm going to bring up, um, you'll see pop up here, a copy of the breakdown sheet. And um, what I'm going to ask you to do here is to um, think about creating uh, for Wednesday, just the first scene. Now I have this broken down here. Um, and you'll see that uh, I want you to think about a working title. And we have something, uh, a scene number. Of course, this just scene number one. That's what I want you to start with. And then there's two things I'm asking you to fill in here is the content of the scene and then the context of the scene. So the content being what's happening. This is the scene summary. This is what's going to be happening within the scene. And then uh, who are the characters in that scene? The context is thinking more deeply about kind of what's going on behind the scenes. What is the meaning of this? What are we learning? What um, uh, we, and when I say we, I mean the readers. What is the reader getting from this scene? Um, what is, how is this, uh, how is the uh, emotional arc progressing? What's uh, what's sort of happening to the character here? Um, and uh, I w there is a sample, and I'll bring that up here, um, a sample breakdown to give you an idea of what the difference is between the content and the context. Uh, and you'll see that the content is more about what's what the uh, reader will um, the see in the scene who the characters are the context is more uh, of the abstract ideas about what's happening in it and where the story's going okay so three um three things that i want to go over here when we're talking about what a comic page looks like and uh, there's some terminology here that i want to provide for you um, to, to give you an idea of when I use these words, when you hear these words, what, the, what they all mean. Uh, the comic book page is an entire page of a series of panels um, that go from one to however many panels are on the page. Sometimes you'll have what's called a splash page, and that's just a single page, um, and it's all one panel. Uh, you might have a series of panels. Um, of course, as we uh, heard Scott McCloud talk about in his lecture, comics are read just like fiction from left to right, top to bottom. Um, and the ways in which the panels are drawn on the page can sort of dictate how we move through those because they're not always exactly the same size. And again, on Monday, I'll have some samples um, and we can talk about that a little bit more. Um, but um, panels, uh, the page itself is made up of panels, and each panel will have its own individual um, description with dialogue, if there are any, uh, etc., uh, in the script. And then a scene would be whenever, uh, whatever part of the comic that is taking place within a very specific place or a very specific time. When there is a jump in place or time, we're moving to a new scene. Uh, and this 
this has some connections to how it works in fiction, but of course in fiction, we have a lot more leeway to sort of jump around between place and time. Uh, but in comics, it's very clear that when we have movement between a place um, and, and time, uh, and or time, then uh, we've started a new scene. Um, and uh, so that's how I want you to think about that. We have panels, and then the page, and then the scene. And sometimes one scene can mean a whole, just one page, or sometimes a scene can go over multiple pages. Um, so we'll spend some time talking about that um, and as we look at those samples on Monday. So for uh, this, for this um, breakdown sheet, what I'd like you to do for um, the uh, first draft, I guess, of this breakdown sheet when you turn it in on Sunday, just work on the first scene. Um, open up that document, fill out uh, just scene one, and then explain what's happening within that scene. And uh, then we will um, continue to move on with that in class on Monday. So just make sure you, if you turn it in to me, make sure you have a copy of it available to you on your computer, or you can print one out, bring that into class with you on Monday. So that's where we're gonna, um, that's where we're gonna move next. If uh, you have any questions about um, how you should sort of create that scene out of the summary you've already written, uh, just drop me an email and I'll be happy to talk a little bit more about it. Um, I will see you in class on Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody. See you later. Bye.